OCD! Um, obsessive compulsive disorder mm -hmm. is what we are here to talk about today. Yes, as we are. I am a huge sufferer, being a crazy butch. <laughs> <laughs> um, although at the moment, I have to say that my mm. OCD is almost completely manageable at the moment. That is I am um, amazing. Yeah, I mean, this time, maybe last year or two years ago, it would have been a completely different story. Yeah. Um, OCD is quite manageable, but when it couples with depression and anxiety and all the other yeah. things, that's comes this whole big knot of can't fucking do anything and can't leave your bed, can't leave the house, all that kind of jazz. But it's different for different people. Um, I'm talking about my OCD yeah. <laughs> and hopefully it will um, give you an insight, especially when it comes to sex. <laughs> so my OCD is mainly revolving around um, control, obviously. OCD is all about control. Yes. Um, and so my control ends up coming out in stupid ways like making things in... Oh, it's so hard to explain! Um, putting things in the position where I want it and mm -hmm. plans going the way that I've imagined it and mm -hmm. if they don't go that way then I freak out. If things are moved or put in different places and I'm having a bad day then I freak out. Um, yeah. You know, it could be something small as someone's put my flannel back the wrong way. Do you remember when um, someone stirred your kale? Oh my god! That like ridiculous. Someone stirred my kale, and in my head that I thought that they'd, eat, they'd eaten it. You know, it, like kale is in food, cooking kale, vegetables. Someone moved it for fuck's sake, and I freaked out. I genuinely yeah. cried over it. Ridiculous. <laughs> but the the best thing about OCD is that now I can laugh about it because it is so fucking ridiculous. Half the stuff that you think about and look at and do in your mind is absurd and most people mm. know that as well um, which yeah. is often why OCD can be tricky because you have no idea why you're doing it and you feel embarrassed and, and stupid and after you've done something or after you've freaked out over something very very small you've gone the fuck, why did I do that it's ridiculous um, but I can only say that now looking back on it and it being manageable CBT therapy cognitive behavioral therapy has made this possible um, it could also be the time in my life as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's it's really manageable at the moment. I'm having such a good time, loving life, really enjoying it. Therapy has helped so so much. So I mean, I, I've been doing therapy for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, and hated it, and hated everyone I saw, and then I saw this one perfect person who yeah. just changed everything for That's me. That's the thing with like yeah. CBT yeah. therapy. You need the right person you to need talk to. the right person. You know, if you've gone and tried therapy before and it hasn't worked, it's probably because you haven't found the person you can connect with exactly. and want to work hard for. Yeah. You can't just go, nope, I don't need it, and I don't want to do the exercises. Yeah. You have to go home and yeah. genuinely try and really push yourself with OCD. Yeah. You know, if, if leaving a cup out freaks you out, you try so hard to leave it. Yeah, I had a big thing around making my bed. It had to be made so perfectly. And if it wasn't made, I and I left without it being made, or if I know that my boyfriend hadn't made it, I would genuinely make myself sick throughout the whole day thinking mm. about my bed not being made perfectly. I'm in, in the fucking toilet, like crying my eyes out. Yeah. Ridiculous, obscene. <laughs> but you can't help the way you feel. You can only manage it. So how does it affect your sex life or your relationships? Um, sex relationships is pretty pretty bad. Um, my boyfriend unfortunately gets the brunt of all of my my crazy like yeah. all the time. You've even <laughs> witnessed it, and it's not his fault, but it's just I I seem to just attack um, my partners, and I, I think I did that with my ex as well. But that was before I was diagnosed, so he he neither of us had any idea. I think I was just yeah. being a bitch. <laughs> but now that I can say. Yep, it's the OCD. It's it does affect it a lot, um, and I feel that it's probably the main reason why we argue is when yeah. I can't deal with something or I stress out or I get angry about it, um, and then that causes a lot of issues. But when it comes yeah. to sex, um, the only thing that I can think of is because I relish so much in in the control and having having the control and moving my toothbrush into a certain position. Mm -hmm. If somebody else is taking the control sexually from me, it's like orgasmic bliss where I don't have to even think about yeah. what I'm doing, what control I'm I'm trying to take over, or what, yeah, um, that makes so much sense. I think. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. It's nice if someone's taking like when you're. Well, when I'm having sex, I just, I lose it. I don't think of anything. It's it's like everything melts away. Yeah. Um, I don't think I use sex as a vice, though. I don't think I've ever been a sex addict where um, 
I thought, like, okay, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I'm going to have sex. No, I've, I've never yeah. used it like that, but people yeah. can use it like that. Um, yeah, I can see how that could happen really easily mm. if you felt so good and like released during mm. sex. I could see what why someone would crave that. Yeah, and, and it's I mean, almost like a drug in a way. Yeah, you could become a sex addict because it is it yeah. is so enjoyable not being in control. Yeah, it might be different for other people. I mean, I always thought I'd be a dominatrix when I was older because. Uh, I had all this sort of pent up, uh, yes, I know what I'm doing, I'm very yeah. sure, I'm very dominating, but as soon yeah. as it comes to the bedroom, I want to really be submissive nice, yeah. and somebody else has to take control. So good. So good! <laughs> <laughs> but also, not so good if, if you're worrying about all the OCD-ness. The other problem that I noticed is that when I was depressed, I had no sex drive and I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to have sex. Um, but that was just depression. Depression does that to, yeah, I think, most that's, people. Yeah, that's one of the symptoms. I have heard about people, people who suffer from OCD who account, who are counters, say if they count Ooh, to six yeah. and they've masturbated and they've come, they feel like they have to do that six times, which yeah. can be very problematic, can be painful. That could be really um, destructive. Yeah, and, and you, you end up not enjoying sex. If you're not seeing somebody already, go and see somebody. I never put up with feeling that way. No, never put up with it. it you know, it's not the end of, end of the road. And yeah. for a long, long time, I had no idea I had OCD. No yeah. idea. I couldn't understand why I was being weird and unusual and depressed and all this stuff. And then when it finally came out in therapy and they were like, we think you've got OCD. I was like, no, I don't have OCD. I don't flick light switches and check ovens. Yeah, no, I don't yeah, yeah. do that. But it's OCDs, so many different types. It's the same with all mental health problems. Um, the variety of things that people do mm. with those with those issues is crazy. It's, it is crazy. I mean, there's, it, they're so vast. I think yeah. one of the main problems for people um, with OCD is if you have. Um, if you have control around hygiene, that can be so problematic for people who want to have sex because the idea of kissing somebody or touching somebody is repulsive to them and you worry about yeah. so many um, so many things that you can get and all the diseases that... Again, it's different for different people, so if this doesn't yeah. relate to you, you know, this is just what I've heard. Yeah. Um, but I, I know that that can be really problematic for people. Again, I'd, I'd like to do more research and see how that yeah. can be tackled. Yeah. A lot about OCD is you get these repetitive intrusive thoughts, which could be anything from um, I want to harm myself or harm someone else, or it could just be nobody likes you, or it, it could be anything. A lot of people can get inappropriate sexual intrusive thoughts, so you might, your brain might suddenly think, oh, um, I want to fuck my brother, for example, and you cannot get that out of your head, which can really ruin sex for you. But what you have to understand is that your brain is so fucking powerful, it can think of a million different things at once. Um, and just because your brain thinks that that doesn't mean that it's what you want to do or it's what you're going to do. Um, you have to understand that it is just a thought and the best thing you can do is just try and ignore it or distract yourself or yeah. do a counting exercise. Um, unless you count a lot, <laughs> then don't do that. Do something else yeah. that works for you. But Distraction is is so key for all those sort of things. Absolutely. Like, don't ever feel bad for thinking anything um, mm -hmm. that you feel uncomfortable or disgusted <coughs> at because that is just your brain fucking with you, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, you can't manage it now, but you will be able to manage it um, and it won't be a problem anymore. The worst thing is worrying about stuff yeah um, and then you worry about it and because you're worrying you worry about it more and it snowballs um, so again if you think any kind of inappropriate sexual thoughts don't don't think it's gonna mm -hmm. don't think you're gonna do it um, just sort of brush it aside like it's part of your crazy like no nope, I'm not having any of that thank you I will think about <laughs> something else <laughs> yeah exactly so doing a little bit of research uh, again super dyslexic so I don't know how well this is done <laughs> Um, but uh, I was looking up that 10% of OCD sufferers have um, quite specific fears revolving around sex like contamination, so hygiene, um, a pregnancy obsession, you can be obsessed with being pregnant or um, rather than wanting to get pregnant, thinking that you're going to get pregnant all yeah. the time, even if you use the pill and a condom, that, that can play on your mind, um, as well as sexual orientation, um, a lot of OCD sufferers are terrified about what if they're straight, if they're gay, if they're bi. Um, again, 
it's, it's easy to say not to worry about it, but this is something that your brain is fucking with you with, pretty much. Um, and you just, just be happy with how you feel. If you're attracted to men, women, to nothing, then feel, feel okay with that. Feel okay with what your brain's telling you. And medication can also be um, an issue with sex. And I tried getting on antidepressants. It really was not right for me. I ended up having a weird psychotic breakdown. Um, after taking one antidepressant pill, which wouldn't have done anything for me. Yeah, um, it must have been like completely in your head. Yeah, I mean, at the time it was one of those where I really didn't want to take antidepressants and everyone yeah. was like, you've got to take them. Like, there is nothing else people can do. You're not getting better, mm. got to take them. And I, I lied and I was like, yeah, I'm taking them. Yes, they're working fine. And then took one one night and then I ended up just flipping out and going through this really horrible, um, depersonalization, derealization stage, which if you don't know about, um, look it up because if you've been through it before, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's horrible, it's inexplicable, um, but it's basically where your brain makes you see yourself um, as not real or see the world as not real, and that can come out in different ways. Like, wow. um, I saw, uh, you know, I didn't even know what was happening at the time, but I saw everything through a TV screen. That's the only way I can explain it. It wasn't through a TV screen. Yeah. There were people there, but I, it was like an almost like an out of body experience. And I just remember looking at my arm being like, it's not my arm, it's not my body, it's definitely not me. Like, you know, how, uh, that's the scariest moment for me because I've never ever thought about, I mean, never wanted to commit suicide or harm myself. But when I was in that state, I was literally like, I need to test if I'm real. The yeah. only way I could think of at the time was to use a knife. I didn't use a knife, thankfully. Um, I sort of went, right, well, this is just my brain doing something fucking weird and I just yeah. have to sleep it off. And you talk to people about it, but that's horrible. <laughs> yeah. And if you go through the same thing, um, you can get help and it can get better. And there's some really good videos on YouTube for depersonalization, derealization. That's not anything to do with OCD. That was just my psychotic breakdown. Um, with medication, which, <laughs> okay, going off topic, sorry guys. Um, with medication, you can come across a lot of problems where you don't want to have sex or maybe your sex drive is too heightened. Mm. Um, again, nothing wrong with that. As long as you're happy, if you're unhappy about yeah. your, the way you look at sex, you've got to change it. You can't just wait for it to be over. I mean, sometimes you, it ha you have to wait because you don't have a choice. Um, but do something, do everything in your power to make it different because it doesn't have to be that way. You know, it could be two years from now and you still, you're still in the same position, you've done nothing. Don't look back at that time and think, I should have done something then, do it now. Right now! Yeah. <laughs> so as we both agree, sex is supposed to be fun and enjoyable. Always. 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 No point doing it if it's not fun and enjoyable. And yeah. with OCD, you tend to overthink a lot mm -hmm. um, and repeat things in your head yeah. and if you've had a bad sexual experience you think about it a lot or you get those horrible intrusive yeah. thoughts. CBT therapy um, or any kind of any kind of therapy, any anything that works for you will fix this um, but yeah. you need to go and get it get it sorted really. Some people like exercise, like yoga, yeah. things like yoga and meditation really help with these sort of things. You can well. find positive controlling methods yeah. where, um, you know, instead of cleaning all the time, yeah. you could go and do yoga or, yeah, exactly. Uh, like or, positive um, things that sort of release those mm. feelings, that those urges. Yeah, I mean, try kickboxing or self-defense. Again, that's very good for control because yeah. you are in control of your own body and, and what you're yeah. doing there. Yeah, there are positive outlets. Absolutely, yeah. And again, you know, cleaning isn't it isn't the worst thing. No, it's a pretty it, good it's thing. It's quite positive. Um, it was good when I was living here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you know, I procrastinate a lot with cleaning. I, I've got yeah. stuff to do and I'll go, oh my god, that has to be cleaned or yeah. that has to be tidied or moved or whatever. Um, so it can be positive, but it all depends on how you think about it. You know, um, I, sometimes if I'm having a good day, I'm like, all right, yeah, I'll clean and I'm okay with this. But when it's yeah. like, oh, I have to clean because this is disgusting, that's not yeah. okay. No. Um, make sure that you try and find a positive outlet for your OCD and control. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> this little lady has um, another uh, yes. video. Um, uh, we've got another video out on my uh, trichotillomania, if you're terror, interested terror, in that. Terror. If you are a sufferer of that, or if you know someone that's suffering, which is a hair pulling disorder, we mm. pull out your hair. It's, it's almost very similar, but very different in Yeah, there are ways. a lot of um, 
ways that it does relate to OCD. I remember when I was in CBT, they gave me a leaflet on OCD and I was like, oh yeah, mm. these, like so many of these things relate to me. Yeah. So it, it's very, it ties in very, very closely with OCD. Mm. Well, it's all about control, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's controlling, uh, it, because you can't control one aspect of your life, it comes exactly. out in a completely different yeah. way. And, you control and the ritualistic yeah, things ritual, about it, yeah. very sort of, like obsessive compulsive mm. yeah it it's is a, it's a compulsive thing to do yeah you can't can't bloody help it but yeah. so um, check check my video out on that check it out and um let us know if this video has been useful for you or yes. if you've had a different experience or if there's anything you want to add i'd love yeah. to hear from you we'd love to hear from you yeah we would um and hope this has been helpful and um yeah speak to you guys soon yeah. don't get too crazy now <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye.